next news is out of Assay, Indi- Indonesia. A man and woman fall conscious in public floggings in Assay. Aceh, um, Aceh, not Assay. Aceh. Aceh. Thank you, Armin. In two separate cases, a woman and a man passed out after being publicly caned for a punishment and violating the promises Islamic criminal code. So uh, the first case was a 22-year-old man who was found guilty of extramarital sex. Um, he was beaten unconscious, right? Um, and then he he fell. Well, once he fell unconscious, they continued to beat him until he woke up and he was taken uh, wow. to the hospital. Yes, and a woman uh, was flogged after she was allegedly caught being too close to a man. What? Yeah. This is worse than even Iran now. Oh, it's terrible. So, by the way, for people that don't know, Aceh is like a province in Indonesia that is the most Islamic, uh, Sharia-friendly part of Indonesia, right? So the more Islamic you get, this is what you get. But, you know, I, I've seen a lot of these public beatings for violating Islamic rules in Aceh, and I always knew this is not true, but I was hoping that they're not beating them too hard. Like, like it's just like... You know, it, it hurts, but not so hard. But the fact that these people passed out from the pain proves that I was right. That no, they do it like they go all out with. You know, they, that's how much. Think how in inhum- this is what your religion brings to you. Like you're beating up a, a woman because she was just too close to a man, and she passes out, and they pass out, and you wait for them to come back, and you continue the beating. Like, like who, like. Isn't this a time, like, when you're doing this, don't you, like, th- does it cross your mind, like, we might be the baddies here? Like, don't you think, like, are we not evil? Like, does it, does it not cross their yeah. mind? But, like, who, like, look, this guy that is beating this woman, like, this poor woman they're just sitting, does he not, like, ha- did, did he apply for this job? Like, he's like, yeah, I want to be the guy that beats the woman for, the, like, who does that? These people are, like, they're, they're basically, like, if, if I'm doing it for God, I'm, I cannot be evil at all. Hmm? They're like, if I'm doing it for God, then I cannot be evil, whatever it is. Yeah, but, but like, this is so, yeah, this but... is so torturous. I mean, just, just to point out here, the woman received, another woman received a uh, hundred strokes for being found guilty of committing adultery, right? Hmm. Um, and she only received 39 strokes before she passed out. And the rest of the punishment will be carried out in the next process year. Wow. Okay, so she has to now recover from this, wait, and then go back for her 61 strokes. Seriously, like, how is it that in the, like, the human rights watch, like, and is the United Nations, like, putting... Um, Indonesia. Amnesty International is putting uh, putting a lot of pressure on this. They slammed this, saying that it's cruel, inhumane, and degrading. Right. Um, that the punishments are shameful and vicious, public spectacle. Um, and even even their Indonesia executive director of Amnesty International said the fact that two people are beaten unconscious today in two separate incidents is a damning in- indictment of the authorities who let that happen on their watch. And just to remind you that Indonesia was used as an example by people like Reza Aslan as a great country, Islamic country that could be moderate. And look, look, Islam is not that bad. Look at Indonesia. Yeah, please do look at Indonesia. And another thing I could tell you that Indonesia is getting worse. Like this is getting worse and worse in Indonesia. And this disease of, you know, Sharia is spreading all over Indonesia. It's not just in Aceh anymore, right? Like they're trying to pass on more Islamic laws for the entire country, you know, Please, like, if you care about these things, like, don't go to Indonesia. Don't bring your money. Like, this government shouldn't be rewarded for stuff like this, right? And also, why is it, like, United Nations or United States or European country, are they putting sanctions, like, uh, on Indonesia for the p- poor human rights record? Or is it just do it? They only do it with countries where, when it's politically uh, in their, you know, interest to do so, right? Why is it? Are they doing this with Indonesia? Does anybody know? I mean, that? they... they... Human Rights Council of UN is basically consists of top members like Saudi Arabia and other countries with yeah. human rights violations. So I don't think they are going to do anything about it. Yeah, they just, I mean, I'm in favor of doing this to Iran, but they only do it to Iran because they, it's, they consider Iran like as an enemy, right? But they don't do it when it comes to, uh, only to Iran and other strategically um, 
convenient countries, but they don't do it to Saudi Arabia, they don't do it to Indonesia. Unless we're wrong, let us know if the UN is taking any action against this beyond Amnesty International. Is, is the United Nations doing anything against this? You know, there need to be like sanctions on, you know, they're doing it to China. Like, I was happy that United States was one of the first countries that finally is calling out China for their way that they're treating Muslims, right? We support, I support United States for now, you know, putting sanctions on China for the way that Muslims are treated in China. I support that. But why are you not doing the same thing in Indonesia for the way Muslims are treating their people? Right? By the way, this is, um, this is, you know, a lot of, based, a lot of Arabs, you know, Wahhabi, Saudi, you know, Gulf Arab influence in, in Indonesia. Like there are, this Indonesia is being used as a main place where, um, you know, Arabs from Gulf, Arab countries are going to Indonesia and they're spreading their Islamic disease all, all over Indonesia and it's getting worse and worse Malaysia is getting worse Indonesia is getting worse and this this again shows to again Indonesia and Malaysia getting more Islamic and uh, having r religion influence people's lives I mean Malaysia maybe with the recent election maybe is going I don't know how which direction that's going to go but it was going backwards for a while but that shows that you know, Islam is a disease, is a cancer that you have to get rid of. You cannot be like, oh, we have a moderate version of Islam here. As long as you have the sleeping dragons in in your country, you know, it's gonna it's gonna wake up one day, right? If it's if it's sleeping, if you have like a moderate liberal version of it, if your dragon, if the Islamic dragon is sleeping, that's the time that you go in this cave and you slay it, you comp you end it, you have to destroy it again. This has happened so many times in history to, to, to know that you don't just give up on attacking Islam when, it, when you think it's moderate. In Iran, like back before the Islamic Revolution, no, very few people in Iran thought like Islam is going to have a major comeback. You know, like, oh, you have a chill version of Islam. Some people are religious, some people are not. You know, in Turkey, in Egypt, they went through a very secular period, but they still had Islam. And Islam, if you just let it there, if you just let that disease you know stay there even as a weaker modern version of it eventually will spread and infect the entire country again it happened with iran turkey and egypt and now it's happening with malaysia and indonesia they are like oh look at the indonesia and malaysia these are moderate islamic countries well yeah look at them now again when islam is weak that's when you go full force that's when you know that, that you have to finish the job you complete you have to completely end it you don't just wait for it to come back let me see what the top comment is um, top comment is bro that my country now you know how my feel to live here as an atheist it's hard bro uh -huh. Azrael I feel so bad for atheists in Indonesia because it's, you know I feel like atheists in Indonesia are disconnected from the other athe global atheist community uh, because like like for example atheists in Philippines English is a national language in Philippines, so they at least they follow a whole bunch of other atheists around the world. Like they know, you know, all these people, the podcasts, the YouTube channels, right? And in the Arab world, there even there, the the Arab world has its own, you know, celebrity YouTube atheists, you know, that they follow. There's a lot of content that they are following. A lot of books are getting translated to Arabic. Uh, you know, in in the Persian, you know, in Iran, in in Pakistan, I think in in Bangladesh, there's a whole bunch of secular and atheist writers that people are following, and they con they're connected with the rest of the global atheist community. I feel like the largest Islamic country in the world, which is, is Indonesia, has been is so disconnected from the rest of the atheist community, especially because English is not the common language there. And because people just dismiss Indonesia as like too far away from the rest of us to care about. And I think like this is a country that we need to pay more attention to, especially given how Islam is get, get, you know, spreading more there. And we don't, it's hard for us to find people to talk to there, to bring on our show. So if you know Indonesian atheist activists that speak English, that could maybe not live in Indonesia because legally you can't be an atheist in Indonesia. Uh, so, but if you know them that live, they live outside of Indonesia, they could come on our show and explain to us what's happening in Indonesia. We will very much have to have a discussion with them, right? So please introduce them to us. Maybe introduce them to Ali on Twitter or something like that, right? Or contact us on atheistrepublic.com. Um, anyways, do you guys want to add anything before we go to the next news? Nope. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. 
If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.